Hey, this is Chris Velasco with TechCrunch, and today we're joined by a very special guest here in our New York office. We've got Jeff Powers, CEO and co-founder of Occipital. Jeff, how are you? Very good. How are you, Chris? I'm doing really well, and I've noticed immediately that you've got something very interesting looking in your lap. What is, what is going on there? Uh, yes, I do. So this is the structure sensor, and this is a new hardware device that we have built at Occipital. See, that's interesting because you guys have had a long history in software. You made Red Laser, uh, you made 360 Panorama, obviously both very popular apps. But hardware, that's, that's really kind of a weird change of pace for you. Why, why did you feel the need to go that route? That's a good question. Um, we've never built hardware, so uh, we had to um, retrofit our team when we decided to do this. The genesis of this was um, a realization on the part of our team that uh, the experiences we wanted to build in computer vision and mm -hmm. augmented reality were uh, extremely difficult to build with the sensors that are on board our you know, normal devices that we carry around today, like tablets and, right. and uh, smartphones. And so we went ahead and uh, rectified that by building a sensor that really expands uh, the sensing capabilities of the iPad. So take us through, what does this thing actually do and why is it attached to it in that way? Absolutely. So um, this device is the first 3D sensor that has been designed to work with mobile devices. Um, you may have seen other 3D sensors out there on the market today. Uh, the first 3D sensor that really made its way into homes was the Microsoft Kinect. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a groundbreaking device, um, and we got really excited when this device was launched. But we realized that um, there, was an, there was a hole, and there was no 3D sensor that had been designed to work with the devices that we now carry around uh, every day with us. So now we've got the structure up and running on an iPad. What are we looking at here? Um, what we're looking at here is an app called Scanner Demo that we are going to ship uh, complete with source code for developers uh, to start hacking with. An interesting feature of Scanner Demo is it's placing this cube that you can see mm. on the table. And um, actually, as I move, it'll snap to the ground. So it's able to detect, detect sort of the difference in, in distance? or it's, Yeah, it's able to detect the distance and the planar surfaces. So it's able to find that surface. Um, at that point, I could actually start scanning this, um, this uh, pack of books that you can see here. Now, what's the sort of operational range on something like the structure? Uh, what the device does uh, today in the version that we're launching is it works starting at about 35 centimeters, and it works out to about 3.5 to 5 meters, depending on the reflectivity of the object that you're trying to scan. You really want to use it in the range from about a half a meter to a meter to get the best results. So in this demo, what we're able to do is spin the device around, and instead of capturing an object, this time we're capturing an entire room. We can capture the geometry of the room, and uh, after we have that, we're going to be able to do things such as perform measurements in a space. Um, we could play augmented reality or virtual reality games in that space. So there's all sorts of things you can do when uh, you can capture the environment like we're doing here. And the final product is really sort of interactive, too. You're able to kind of jump from the first person to like a sort of bird's eye view as well. Yeah, like it starts out feeling a lot like a panorama. We have a history in panorama apps. And, <laughs> right. And uh, where it gets crazy, though, is when you flip to a bird's eye view and you realize that you don't just have a panoramic sphere, you have the full geometry of the space. And this whole thing is, is to scale, too, right? So you can yeah. theoretically like use it to, to map a room and kind of figure yeah. out what, what should go where and kind exactly. of where things will fit. Yeah, so if you have an object uh, where you know the exact dimensions of that object, you can check whether it will fit in the space. And this is one of the sort of foundational uh, tasks that we think people will do when they have 3D models of their spaces. So inside the device, we have um, a camera, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. We have a specialized infrared projector, and this is the active emitter on the device. We also have a pair of infrared LEDs. In addition, we also have a battery on the inside. Uh, this is crucial to allow the device to be self-powered so it doesn't consume any of the energy from the iPad, mm. which uh, makes sure that your iPad battery doesn't die too fast and um, can give you actually quite a long uh, runtime as well. Is it strictly devoted to working on an iPad, or can we get this working on other devices as well? Um, we actually thought about that. And what we did is we made the device open and hackable. We created several things that are going to allow you to use it with other devices. Um, the first and most important thing is what we call the hacker cable. <laughs> the hacker cable is actually a USB cable uh, that's designed to be attached to anything. The other thing that we're doing in addition to the hacker cable is we're providing open source drivers for other platforms. So if you're not developing on iOS, you can have open source drivers for Windows, Linux, Android, and OS X. Mm -hmm. um, the third part of the equation is, is kind of interesting. Uh, what we're doing is publishing specifications, 
CAD specifications for individuals in the maker community to build their own brackets to attach this device mm -hmm. to almost anything. If you look at the bottom of the device, you can see there are four screw holes. And those screws that you use on those four holes are standard screws you can get at the hardware store. We're also going to ship some with the device. So what if we try to scan something a bit more detailed? Uh, yeah, why don't we scan Adam here? Uh, Adam, prepare to be digitized. So um, as we wait, um, here the sensor data is being fused, and we're getting a nice scan of the geometry of Adam's head. And as I walk around, it fills in the areas that we haven't seen yet. So, I mean, the genesis of this whole device was that originally we wanted to build an augmented reality game engine, and here you're seeing the beginnings of us actually putting that together. So it kind of closes the loop. What we have is a, a virtual cat. Uh, this demo is called Fetch. It's also going to be available uh, with the device. And uh, this little cat is actually reacting to real-world geometry, as you can see here <laughs> on the scene. Um, the cat's also being occluded by real-world geometry as well, which is kind of a big deal uh, in the augmented reality world. All right, Jeff, so we've got the structure itself, we've got SDKs, we've got a lot of stuff that's got to come out. When can people get it, and how much can they get it all for? So what we're going to do is launch the device via Kickstarter, and we're doing that to get sensors into the hands of influential backers, people that want to start developing apps. Um, really, we are targeting early adopters, people that need to get their hands on tech when it's, when it's first out of the market. People like us, basically. Like us, and developers that need to build the first apps. You know, you're know, you going to have a chance to be one of the first developers to build a, uh, an app for structure. Mm -hmm. And so the way to become one of those first developers is to back the Kickstarter project. Uh, those backers will get units. Uh, the target is for the holiday season this year. So it's actually a cool uh, holiday gift for someone who's uh, you know early adopter developer. So how much is this going to actually cost early Kickstarter backers? Uh, so the price that we're targeting right now is $349 uh, for Kickstarter backers. Um, and there'll also be another option when you get one of the first units. It'll cost a little more than that, but you will be one of the first to get our first production run. Awesome. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. This is really exciting stuff. We're looking forward to seeing what happens with Structure next. Thanks.